So my name is Elizabeth Cantor, and I will be talking today about a paper that we published last year on adolescent inflammation and body mass index in relation to colorectal cancer. And I should say that this is not explicitly a study of early onset colorectal cancer, but you'll see that it is um, largely a study of young patients, a young population. So first I'd like to start by providing a little bit of background. So as we can see here, um, with this data here from um, Rebecca, uh, colorectal cancer is the third most commonly can diagnosed cancer among men and women in the United States, a statistic, a statistic with which I'm sure all of you are very familiar. And we know a lot about um, adult exposures as they relate to the development of colorectal cancer, but we know relatively little about how early life exposures relate to risk. And this is largely a function of um, practicality and also study design. So we know that colorectal cancers develop, say, over a 10, 15 year period. And so when we do a study of colorectal cancer and we need an adequately powered study, um, we're gonna study older adults. So we might ask about exposures, say, in the last 10 years, um, but rarely have we actually asked about studies occurring in childhood or adolescence. So we know that there's convincing evidence that adult body mass index is positively associated with risk of colorectal cancer. And this is thought to um, be a function of several potential mechanisms, such as um, BMI's effect on inflammation, insulin, leptin, steroid hormones. Um, and we also know that chronic inflammation is implicated in colorectal cancer etiology. We know that people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, these inflammatory bowel diseases, experience increased risk of colorectal cancer. We also know that aspirin, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, is associated with reduced risk. And there are several prospective studies of inflammation in adulthood, which show that markers of inflammation in the blood are associated with increased risk. Um, and there are various lines of evidence to point to the involvement of inflammation early in this process of colorectal carcinogenesis. Um, however, we really know little about how early life BMI relates to risk of colorectal cancer. We saw Christine's results and we saw a number of studies, but a number of those studies have a lot of severe limitations, such as um, asking people to recall their childhood BMI. And if you ask me about my weight when I was 18, I think I could give you maybe a 10 pound range. <laughs> um, but um, they also might be smaller, and so it's harder to disaggregate obese adolescents from, say, overweight adolescents because we simply didn't have that many obese and overweight adolescents, say, back in the 1970s or 60s. Um, and no prior studies, to our knowledge, had evaluated the association between inflammation as measured in early life and colorectal cancer risk among healthy individuals. So um, Tom asked me to speak today about a, publish, a study that we published um, which sought to address this topic. So the aims of the study to, were to evaluate the associations between late adolescent BMI and inflammation as measured by erythrocyte sedimentation rate um, and risk of colorectal cancer in a cohort of Swedish men. So I had some very kind Swedish collaborators who invited me to spend um, a month over there and work with them on this project and analysis. So I think that this is important because finding evidence of an association between early life exposure and colorectal cancer can help us better understand the etiology of this disease and also point to potential points of intervention. We don't want to intervene um, after too late. We want to intervene at the right point when these exposures are actually biologically affecting risk. So now I'm going to go into the methods of our study. So this. Um, was conducted in a cohort of men conscribed in the Swedish military between 1969 and 1976. So at this time in Sweden, conscription was mandatory for all men in Sweden. And only men with severe disease or disability were um, exempt from conscription. So this actually included like 96% of the male Swedish population at that time. And these men were conscribed in late adolescence between the ages of 16 and 20. So we started out with a study of 239,000 men aged 16 to 20, and we excluded those with a history of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, because we know that those conditions are associated with increased inflammation and risk of colorectal cancer. So these men completed these extensive examinations, physical, psychological examinations, and all of this information was recorded in the Swedish military conscription register. 
And I don't know if you all are familiar with the um, Scandinavian registries. They have beautiful data. As an epidemiologist, I would love to have this sort of data available to me on a daily basis, but we don't keep track of information in the same way in the United States. So these Scandinavian registries offer an opportunity that we don't have here in the US. So at conscription, height and weight were measured by trained personnel. And so it wasn't participants saying how much they weigh, but we were at, it was actually measured by trained um, nurses. And we categorized BMI into five groups, as you can see here. We had our normal weight group, our, over, our, normal, our underweight, normal weight, and then we had um, class one overweight, class two overweight, and obese individuals. And we did that because we thought that there might be potential heterogeneity in this overweight group in which the risk might not be the same for all overweight adolescents. It's a fairly large group, and we wanted to make sure to disaggregate it as finely as we could. Um, blood was collected at the time of examination from which um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate was measured. And this is a nonspecific marker of the inflammatory response. And we divided this into three categories as had been done in prior Swedish studies. Low inflammation, medium inflammation, and high inflammation. And colorectal cancer cases were identified by linkage to the Swedish National Cancer Registry. So this is another one of those beautiful Swedish registries. Um, in which men could be followed then from the date of conscription, which was 1969 to 1976, all the way until January 1st, 2010, or the date of colorectal cancer diagnosis, death, or emigration out of Sweden. And over this time period, where men had an average follow-up of about 35 years, um, we saw 885 cases of colorectal cancer diagnosed, most of which were colon cancers. So we used, um, as we do in epidemiology, and we have these a cohort study, we used Cox regression, and um, we adjusted for covariates available from the re National Registry data. And I should note that this is a potential limitation because when you're relying on this registry data, it's not designed specifically for this study. So we can't ask men about their diet because that wasn't collected. We can't ask men about smoking or physical activity, but we actually do have physical activity measures. Um, and muscular strength measures. So we, can, we work with what we have, um, but there are limitations with use of registry data, I should know. So just to summarize quickly, as we can see here, men um, in 1969 to 1976 had BMI and ESR measured, and they were followed until 2010 for risk of colorectal cancer. Um, and men were not followed until late adulthood. They were, you know, they were 16 to 20 at this time, so at the end of follow-up, most men were in their early to mid-50s. So it's not explicitly a study of early onset colorectal cancer, but most men were followed through early adulthood. So now move on to the results, and this is a big table, but what I want you to first focus on is right here. So we can see that about 5% um, of men you know, were in this class one overweight group, 2% um, were class two overweight, and less than 1% were obese, which is where this huge study and these huge numbers come, come to play. Because if we had a much smaller study, we could never have disaggregated these groups into three different groups. Um, but because we had the entire male Swedish population in this conscription registry, we could disaggregate them. So here we'll just focus on our fully adjusted results. We can see that as compared to normal weight men, um, men in this class two overweight group had about a twofold higher risk of colorectal cancer over the subsequent 35 years than their normal weight counterparts. And we can see that um, the obese men had about a 2.38-fold higher risk of colorectal cancer, and this trend was statistically significant. So moving on to our results of inflammation, we can see that those men with high inflammation had 63% higher risk of colorectal cancer than those men who had um, normal inflammation in late adolescence. And again, this trend was statistically significant. But we saw these results and we, were, we had been worried about the fact that, you know, men with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease might not have actually been diagnosed by the time of um, entrance into the study. And so we delayed the start of follow-up by 10 years and we excluded men who were diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease in that time because that gave us greater confidence that we were actually focusing on men without these conditions. When we did that, we found that the results did attenuate a bit. You can see from 1.63 to 1.48, but you can see that the trend was still statistically significant, suggesting to me that there is something going on in actually these apparently healthy men um, to suggest that they have um, higher risk of colorectal cancer with this higher um, inflammation.
So just to move on to a bit of discussion. So we saw a really strong association between late adolescent BMI and colorectal cancer. So as an epidemiologist, when we see a hazard ratio over two, that's very strong. And it always kind of makes you think and double check everything and check everything three times, 10 times, <laughs> every which way. Um, but these results were really robust. And we saw this association not just for those obese men, but also the class two overweight men, which I thought was really interesting. When we had disaggregated that overweight group, we see a difference in association there with the men who are more severely overweight having a stronger association. And what I thought was interesting is that actually these results for BMI were adjusted for erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is one of the mechanisms you know, we think that BMI might affect risk of colorectal cancer through an inflammatory mechanism. But this association was there even with adjustment of erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is just one measure of inflammation, I should note. So it may be different if you were to adjust for CRP or other markers of inflammation. Um, and I didn't note in the interest of time our results by subsite, but they did not statistically differ. So the results align with the literature, and as you saw earlier from Christine's talk, most but not all studies of adolescent early adult BMI um, and colorectal cancer indicate a positive association. But a lot of those studies are limited by self-report, um, number of small events, or the combination of the overweight and obese groups. And one study I'd like to highlight in particular is one that is uh, most comparable to ours, and that was a study of Israeli conscripts, in which they were followed for 18 years. So it's actually a very similar type of study. And there they grouped men into different um, quintiles of body mass index. So those men in the top 20% of body mass index had a 69% higher risk of colorectal cancer than those in the lowest quintile. And like our study, again, they had very few overweight and obese men. So that top quintile actually includes men who are also normal weight, includes the obese, the overweight, but also some normal weight men. So it's really not disaggregating that group. Um, and I think that that's important because at first I thought our results were so strong when I saw the 2.38, but if I had similarly defined my, my groups, actually their association would be um, slightly stronger. So um, it's always a matter of how you look at things. Um, but another consideration is that high BMI was uncommon at this time in Sweden, um, and the, the causes of obesity then might be different than they are today in which adolescent obesity is uh, much more common. And that may or may not affect the generalizability of these results. Um, again, men were followed for an average of 35 years. Um, and so they were not followed into a late adulthood. And the etiology of these early to midlife colorectal cancers may differ from those occurring in later adulthood. Um, as I've noted earlier, we also observed a strong gradient between ESR and colorectal cancer risk with no difference by subsite. And to our knowledge, this is the first study to report on the association between adolescent inflammation and colorectal cancer risk. And that's because, I mean, we don't have blood in this country on, and where we measured markers of inflammation on people when they were age 18 and then have information on their colorectal cancer status later in life. Um, so this cannot be directly compared to other studies, but there is a vast literature on adult inflammation and risk of colorectal cancer that does suggest a positive association. But I should note that it is not as consistent as one might expect, as nothing is in epidemiology. <laughs> um, and I, I also, one other important limitation is that there was a recent study that found no association between circulating marker of inflammation, CRP, and colonic inflammation. So just because we're seeing this association here for the systemic marker of inflammation does not necessarily mean that that translates to inflammation in the colon. We think it does, but it may or may not. Um, another important limitation of this study is that we're unable to account at, for exposure at other points in the life course. So here we've measured exposure age 18, or 16 to 20, but that may um, be correlated with exposure, say, in childhood or adulthood. And here we can't pinpoint which one of those might be driving this association. If you take a look at my inflammation, my body mass index today, it is going to be correlated likely with you know, my um, BMI and inflammation at later life points or earlier life points. Um, and so it's unclear if it's really this adolescent period that's really important here or if it's just a marker. Um, it's also possible that our results are marking other colorectal cancer risk factors. So for example, the Swedish registries at this time did not capture smoking. And that's a really important limitation, um, but ESR is not really strongly associated with smoking, and the association between smoking and colorectal cancer is not as weak as we observed in this study. Um, like if we look at those associations for BMI um, or ESR, those are stronger than we would expect to see. So 
Um, but that's something to keep in mind. And I think we should also have caution with generaliz generalization. This is a study of men and not a study of women. And you know, there's differences in hormones and all of those sorts of factors that may affect the generalizability of these results. But I should note that um, this is a large population, a population-based cohort of Swedish men. It's a national cohort. Um, and we have inflammation measured early in life, which was super exciting to me um, as an epidemiologist. Um, we have adolescent BMI measured, and the BMI and inflammation measures were actually mutually adjusted. So we can really pinpoint, uh, separate those two factors. So in conclusion, um, this study suggests a gradient between adolescent inflammation and um, colorectal cancer and an even stronger association for adolescent BMI in relation to colorectal cancer. Um, so this suggests that early life inflammation in BMI may be important to the development of colorectal cancer. And I think that this is especially interesting in light of the increasing incidence of early onset colorectal cancer. We know that adolescent obesity is increasing in this country, um, and so I think that this makes me think more about the potential for BMI um, in its role in that increasing trend. Um, however, further research is needed to disentangle BMI and inflammation from associated exposures and similarly from exposures at other points in the life course. Um, and with that, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators, um, especially my Swedish collaborators who kindly hosted me um, in Sweden to do this project as well as my um, other collaborators on this paper and our funding sources. So thank you, really appreciate it. Thank you.